Actually, you know, that was a really nice segue that you had. Uh, this, you know, the tough love segue, because this is going to kind of feed right into that. Um, the left is going to make a huge deal about uh, 200,000 people being, you know, taken off of access and uh, Medicare in September. Um, you know, they're going to say that we're, you know, we're killing the poor. And, and you know, if you could expound on that and kind of counteract the hysteria spin that the left's going to put on it, uh, you know, they're going to try to employ that tactic. You know, tell us the facts. And give us, you know, the real data that the media is just going to somehow leave out. Sure. Well, and I, and I can appreciate that question too. It's 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 important to understand that at, at the state level, we're being faced with the the biggest, the, the the most historic budget deficit that this state has seen in its history. And the fact is that a few years ago, six years ago, seven years ago. The, our revenues were pretty much double of what they are now. I mean, our economy is barely beginning to grow now, but we've gone through some tough times, and we're going through some tough times at the state level. And, you know, we have to make decisions that uh, affect the state. But the fact is that we are elected to make these decisions. And if, if, if we want to do what's right for, the, for our state, we have to make sure that we don't bankrupt it. We have to make sure that we're leading with, with ideas, moving the state forward, but facing reality. And the reality is, is that the state is out of money. I mean, Prop 204, which was what began access in this state, was supposed to be something that was, um, that was supported by or funded by the tobacco settlement funds, which equal to about 150 million of what's coming in right now a year. Well, that's supposed to be what's funding access. Here in the state, we're giving up to 800, 850 million dollars, almost a billion dollars for access. That's not what the voters wanted. That's not what the voters intended. And so it has gotten to the point where we keep adding and adding and adding, and it's insolvent. We, we can no longer support that. Now, we also have to be careful that we are not wasting money in certain areas that we shouldn't be. There's people out there that need help, need medical attention, and we can't get the, give them anything because we're wasting in other areas or because we're, we're allowing there to be a lot of fraudulent activity in the area of access. And, 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 and there's many examples as to how there is a lot of fraud happening in our Medicaid system. There's people that are, be, are qualifying for benefits that shouldn't be qualifying. There's people that are, that are accepting access benefits that perhaps, you know, shouldn't be qualified. And I'm just being real. I'm being honest. I mean... There's an example of, of a lady that I knew. She said that when she had her baby years ago, that all she wanted help was for the milk of the baby. And she went to WIC and applied access, and they told her, you make $75 too much, so you are not qualified. She left that place broken. And right outside, as she walked through the door, she, said, she told me, that people approached her to sell her the milk at half price of what you would get at the store. In other words, people were getting it for free, turning around and selling it. Now, if that is not appalling, I don't know what is. People using the system, taking advantage of the system, it's not right. So we need to close a lot of loopholes. Now, with what's happening right now here in Arizona, the fact is that um, we need to make sure that we are being good stewards, faithful stewards of the people's money. And the fact is that there, 150 million is what's coming in of tobacco settlement funds. We're spending 850 million from the general fund. It's not what the people required or asked for. And so there's a lot of spin that the media is going to take that we're killing people, that the legislature is, is you know, taking away and there's a role of government, and 
there's a role of personal responsibility. And I cannot force you to pay for my health care. That's wrong. I cannot force somebody else to pay for my benefits. There are those that we need to care for. But there are others that are just taking advantage of the system. And it's not even that at this point. Even if that were to be the argument, we have no money in the state. There's no money. And so we have to make sure that we're taking care of the most vulnerable, but at the same time that we're cutting the fat from government and that we're, 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 we're being faithful stewards of what is coming in and what the people really asked for. Now, you really stood your ground. You stood out. You were an absolute leader when it came to your support in 1070. Um, you were abused by your own people. Uh, maybe can you, if you choose, to maybe expound a little bit on some of the abuses that you took and, uh, you know, how you held your ground and, uh, and how you stand by your decision. I mean, if, if, if you're comfortable. Of course. Um, I, I really, really wouldn't say that it was abuse from my people because I tell people, I'm American first, American second, and American third. There you go. And as I've mentioned priorly, Hispanic Americans are Americans. Exactly. So I think that the abuse and the, the, just the heat, if you want to call it that, comes from the left, from certain segments of the left that have taken over the megaphones and that act like they're speaking for the Hispanic community. And that's not true. The fact is that the majority of Latino, Hispanics, people in this country are law-abiding citizens who honor and respect the laws. And to, and to try to blame illegal immigration on Hispanics is appalling. Because illegal immigration comes from every part of this world. Absolutely. And so my argument towards the left is, you know, this is anti-immigrant, this is anti-Hispanic. Shame on you. Shame on you for blaming illegal immigration on Hispanics, first of all. It is not a Hispanic problem. It is an illegal immigration problem. Now, with that said, I, did a, I, I took a lot of time to pray and to make sure I read the bill. Go figure. <laughs> you know? So, read the bill. I mean, a lot of what the media has put out is very sad. And I, would, I, I almost want to laugh more if it weren't so sad, that they're taking advantage of people's fears, they're taking advantage of people's emotions, lying to them, telling them you have to carry your passport around. That's a lie. Telling them that you have to carry your citizenship status around with them wherever you go. That's a lie. Telling them that this law makes it to where you have to carry your papers, visas, or information around, that's a lie, because the fact is that that's already the law. Mm -hmm. So, I get, I get, you know, a little bit uh, emotional about this, or excited, because they're lying to people. The media should be ashamed of themselves for, for taking advantage of people's fears to make money. And that's exactly what they did. All of them. There's a few that actually told the truth, but the, the ratings is what they cared about. 1070, Senate Bill 1070, was not an immigration law. Senate Bill 1070 was the enforcement of our immigration, federal immigration laws. What was happening is that, this is, this is what I want you to know, what my thoughts are, that there are cities that are preventing police officers from enforcing the laws, from using the tools that the federal government has given them to enforce immigration laws. In other words, the federal government has already vested police officers with the ability to find out who the person committing a crime is. But there are certain cities in the state, we know them as sanctuary cities, that are preventing the police officers from carrying out that process. And that's illegal. And that's wrong. Because and illegal. what's happening is that you have criminals that they'll say, I'm not going to tell you who I am. Now, this is where the, the left should be ashamed of themselves because they're saying, oh, well, not all Hispanic people are, not all immigrants are criminals. Of course not. We're talking about 
criminals here. When a police officer encounters a criminal, and the criminal, criminal doesn't want to tell him who he is, and the criminal has just committed a crime, broken the law somehow, the police officer has the right to find out who it is. And what Senate Bill 1070 did was it allows police officers to find out who that person that broke the law is. That's it. Nothing new. The same reasons that you would get pulled over before 1070 are the same reasons you'll get pulled over after. Oh, well, there's racial profiling. You know, if there's anybody out there racial profiling, we need to go after them. It's wrong. But to say that all our police officers are racial profiling is wrong It's as well. The fact is that these men have sworn to defend us, to protect us. And we need to allow them to use the tools that have been afforded to them. Because it's their lives on the line when they're out there, and it's our lives too. So my reasoning to Senate Bill 1070 was it is the enforcement of current laws already. We're not creating new immigration laws. And my response to people that say it allows for racial profiling, I disagree. If there are evil people out there racial profiling, they're, gonna, they're already doing it now. They're doing it before 1070. What this bill does is actually it, prov it states that you cannot use a person's race or ethnicity to enforce 1070. So there's a lot of verbiage and you know, attacks from the left, but the fact is that 1070 enforces the laws that are there now. And I voted for it, and I support it, and I stand by my decision because I owe it to the public, to my district to protect, to allow police officers to protect them. Think about this, really quick. There's a family who lost their, their, their young girls. Six girls were brutally molested and raped by a criminal who had been deported many times and had many encounters with the law, but because 1070, but because the the laws weren't enforced, this guy kept getting away on the streets. How do we explain that to our people, to this people of Arizona? We can't. We need to enforce the laws, and that's what 1070 did. It's a public safety issue. Not it's a public safety issue and an economic issue. A lot has to be said about that. Remember that it's not fair for us, for, for, for someone to come into the state, not pay into the system, end up in Michigan, where Michigan didn't help us pay for anything we did, and the taxpayers of Arizona are stuck with the bill. It's not right. Uh, now, okay, we're going to have to uh, take a short break with uh, Steve.